Hi people! In this video I'm gonna go through my UI, I'm gonna go through which add-ons I'm using, and I'm also gonna talk a bit about which add-ons I should be using but that I for whatever reason currently am not using. So to get straight into it, the first thing we're gonna talk about is my UI, and it's a bit different from the standard listed UI in several ways. And there are really, I'd say, um, two ideas behind this. Uh, and the first one has got to do with me watching myself play uh, and, uh, you know, watching recorded footage. And I'd see my eyes, you know, just moving all over the place. Sometimes they would be up there on the left corner, sometimes down in the left, uh, top left, bottom left, bottom right, top right. Uh, and the reason for that was because the information that I needed to see uh, was just spread out all over the screen. For example, if I wanted to see who to heal, I'd look down here, and if I wanted to see how much a cast had uh, had progressed, I had to look up there. And then, you know, if I wanted to see who to heal next, I had to look down uh, again, and then whether I shouldn't drop my healing touch or whatever, I had to look back up again. Um, the boss bar was over there, I think, so if I wanted to see how far a cast had progressed, I had to look up there, and essentially, you know, I just noticed that I had to look around so much on my screen, so I decided that I should just centralize all important information from my UI. Uh, so that's why I made this UI where I have my important cooldowns here, uh, Swift, Swift Man, Nature Swiftness, Innervate, and Fairy Fire, and there we have Rebirth, Barkskin, and these two I sometimes switch out depending on what I'm doing. But these are all the important things. Uh, and I also put my little icon right here, character icon, so I can see how much health I have, how much mana I have, and I can also see how far my cast has progressed. And I can interrupt my cast without even looking at the cast bar now, because I see it in the corner of my eye. So meanwhile, the standard Blizzard UI, it kind of frames your screen, so to say. You know, you'll have your uh, your character icon up here, you'll have the group, you'll have the chat here, then you'll have your actions bar and the uh, Blizzard art bar. Um, I don't think you used to have anything there. You have your buffs here, and then you have... Uh, your targets here and yourself there, so... You know, it will kind of frame the middle section of the screen, and this UI instead kind of frames my... Uh, well, my character moving around, and I make sure to not block the character, because I want to see kind of where I'm moving. So that's one of the reasons I want to centralize all the important information, and... The second reason is that I essentially wanted the... The cleanest UI I could get, and basically what a UI is... Uh, it's like buttons and bars and stuff on top of the actual, let's say, of your actual view of the game. So I wanted to have as few things obscuring the world as possible. So I wanted to get as close as possible to basically this. And the way that I did that was partly by removing everything I deemed unnecessary. Uh, and then... Remove... <laughs> basically that was it, remove all that's unnecessary. Uh, and I still have some things, like I... I still have some bars down here, but they only become apparent when I hoover over them. Uh, and I feel like this is a pretty clean UI and I all have all the information very close to hand. I don't have to look around or any of that. And so that is the UI that I'm using here. We're now gonna move over to the add-ons and I'm just gonna go through all my add-ons and the important ones I'm gonna give some more time and the less important ones I'm just quickly gonna explain what they do and then move on to the next one. So the first one is just Atlas Loot, which which allows you to basically look at all the loot that is available in game. Uh, it's very useful, like maybe you want to see is there really anything I need from a certain boss in the instance or a dungeon. And you can just move around here and find exactly what you're looking for. It's I think it's fun to just look around there and it's quite helpful as well. Uh, Auto Invite is good when you are forming pug groups. Essentially what it does is that it allows you to choose a keyword and if someone whispers you that keyword, you automatically invite them. Auto loot just speeds up the auto looting in game. Uh, normally I have to auto loot for like half a second to actually get the loot. And with this one, it's way quicker. Aux is a good add-on for uh, Auction House. And we're going to look at that before the end of the video. Bartender. Now this is an add-on that allows you to move everything around. And it's the add-on that I'm using to create this UI. So we're going to spend a bit more time looking at this. So you get this icon here, and if you just right click it, sorry left click it, then you can move your bars around and then you can lock them. So if I just want to move this down a little bit, I just move it around and then 
I lock it in place and I'm gonna place it like that just to create some sort of symmetry. If you right click it, however, you get a bunch of more, all of more things. Um, some important things that I'll just quickly go over. All these bars are the total number of bars that you can have. Uh, with the blizzard yeah, you can have your bar down here, the two bars here, and then the two bars here. So a total of five bars visible. And then you can scroll on your like main bar uh, to a total of either five or ten, depending on how many bars you have out. Mm, and then you have key bindings, and these key bindings works through the add-on. So if I set a key binding to, for example, um, to Entangling Root and Sleep, that does not change the in-game key bindings. It just affects the add-on key bindings. And what you do is just hover over it and then press the button that you want and then okay and it will be done so you can really do the key bindings quickly but do note that if i should turn uh, bartender off that these uh, key bindings will not remain next up you have all your bars like i said and if you don't want them to show at all you just have them not enabled and if you do enable them uh, then you can start working with them so i think too that's the big bar with important things so what you can do is partly have it partly um, see-through and partly, well, solid. You can change the scale of it, you can make it bigger and you can make it smaller. You can change the distance between the buttons and you can also, going to be a two there. You can also just change how many buttons you want per bar. You can also change how many rows and which way you want it to grow and all that. Another important thing, and this is what I've done with these macro or add-ons, or I mean bars. If you enable fade out and put it to zero, then the bar will be completely invisible until you hover over it. Which is really nice, because that means you can have things like your bag bar, uh, your micro bar, and another uh, key binding bar, uh, and it won't be invisible. So you can kind of have your clean UI and you can have your important bars up at the same time. So that's a nice solution. And those are the things that I've um, done with this add-on. You can also turn on and turn off the Blizzard Art Bar. And I've just turned it off. And then I've moved some things around. I've made them so I only see them when I hover over them. And voila, I have this UI. Next up, we're going to look at... Actually, where are we? Classic Arrow Durations. Uh, it just allows you to see the duration of the buffs that you buffed. So if I target... Do we have an a horde? There we go. I see the timer on that one, so now I can partly see how long he has left, and I can also see, like, thank you to Mogram. Someone might say, I need a new Mock of the Wild, and he has 20 minutes left, and you can just be like, no, you're not gonna get one yet. So it's kind of helpful. Uh, it will show timer on all the buffs for everyone in your raid, I think, but it will just kind of guess the timer, so if someone shows up with, like, uh, the Dragon Slayer buff, it might say that it's two hours left, but that's it might just be 15 minutes less. But the add-on just shows, you know, the buff and the maximum duration, and then it ticks it down. Next up, we have Classic Cast Bars. That's a really good add-on. It basically gives your, um, your target a cast bar down here, so you can see which spell they're casting and when it's done. And that really helps you time interrupts and heals and whatever. Next up, we have Classic... No, we have details and this is basically my i don't know registering add-on you could say so it keeps track of all the heals that who has done and how much healing someone's done uh you can sw switch to the damage done the dps the damage taken that's a useful one you can go over to um let's see healing done hps over healing uh, I'm not, an and then you can see rests, interrupts, dispels, death. So it's really helpful. Like if you do, um, uh, maybe if you do Vesidious or whatever, and you want to see how many, I think it goes under dispels, maybe how much uh, poison people have removed, then you just check the dispels and you can see that. So that's a really hand add on. Um, some, I usually keep it like this, or I just have it completely, you know, folded together and stuck, tucked away down here somewhere when I just can't be bothered looking at uh, the healing done or whatever. You can also get a nice plug-in, which gives you a tiny threat window as well, which allows you to just see everyone's threat and your own threat on a certain target. That's also really helpful. So you only need details to do all of those things. Next up, we have... We have Healbot, and this is one of those add-ons I'm gonna talk a lot about again. 
So to start off, when you heal, I'd recommend you to either use uh, at mouse over macros. And let's see if I can show you what they do. I just need some horde that's AFK. Here we go. So if you right slash cast hard bracket at mouse over and hard bracket healing healing touch and let's find someone who's afk if you write this in a macro what it will do is that it will cast healing touch on the target your mouse is over and this works either like that you know just have it on top of or it works by um like if you have the blizzard ui raid frames if you just move over someone's little square like this then it will also target them so i do the macro and you can see it cast and what this allows you to do uh can you give notes uh, what this allows you to do is, because normally you have to first target and then click your heal. Maybe you want to click, I don't know, Fairy Fire, Swiftman, whatever. Uh, but that means you have to click twice. So you have to click for targeting and then click for heal. And what a mouse over uh, macro allows you to do is you only have to click the heal and then you can move your mouse around. So maybe this guy should have rejuvenation. I just hover over him and cl click maybe two, wherever I have the macro for rejuvenation. This guy needs healing touch and whatever. And I only have to click once per target. Uh, that's one way to do it. To heal a raid or heal a dungeon. And the second way is to have a click to heal. So you still have to target your or hold, hoover over your target. But instead of having the key bindings on your keyboard. You have basically click bindings. So I hoover over and then I click somewhere on the mouse. Let's see if I can show you this. So if I for example click on my right button. I do a rejuvenation. And left I do thorns but i'll get to that soon and left i do healing touch and yet again this um this basically allows me to only use my mouse when healing and then i can entirely use my keyboard to maneuver uh, and personally i think that a click binding or no click to heal is better than at mouse over but both of them are way better than not using any of them because if you have to first click to target and then click to heal you are gonna lose a lot of time and Especially when healing, you know, a second is can be the difference between life and death, and even half a second. And it can also be the difference between... Uh, I thought they were going for me. It can also be the difference between whether you're doing overhealer or if you manage to uh, get your heal off before someone else topped the target off. So um, I wouldn't say that heal bots or overall, I wouldn't say that having a add-on when healing is too important because... What kind of ends up happening is that you have to get... Like, the, the Blizzard raid frames actually do a lot of good things for you. You can edit the important parts. And if you get an add-on, it tends to not have everything that you want. Like, for example, uh, I haven't found a good way with Healbot to make players' mana bar sufficiently large. Like, there is a very tiny mana bar down there, but it's just way too small to be useful. Uh, but on the Blizzard raid frames, it just works perfectly. Now, we're gonna look more detail in Healbot now. Um, there is a lot of things to set in, a lot of settings, but there are not that many things that you have to care about. So we're gonna start off with skins, and there are some preset skins, and I'd recommend just using Raid 40 for everything. Uh, maybe Raid 25 for dungeons, but I'd avoid group, um, the group setting, because it... Let's see if I can actually show you that quickly. Because what it does is that it adds like a delay on uh, damage taken and on healing taken. So when I take damage now, it won't show instantly. Instead, it will reduce like that. And, you know, the health will just go up and down. And you'll have to wait a second, half a second just to see whether someone actually needs a heal. And how big a heal they need and so on and so forth. So I'd recommend just not using the, uh, the group one. I always go with raid 40. Because if someone takes damage with this thing, uh, it is shown instantly and I can instantly determine what like, kind of heal I should use on them. You know, just ticks down immediately. So that's one thing you want to look about. You can go in here, skins, general or protection or chat. You know, skins is basically the important things. And then there are a whole bunch of sub, um, uh, sub things beneath that. And then the second important thing is your spells. And I'd recommend you to get the most logical and like orderly way of keybinding your spells or click binding your spells. So on my left mouse button, I have healing touch. 
Uh, so if I just click, it's healing touch rank four. I sometimes switch to rank three. If I do a shift click, it becomes rank 10. And if I do a control click, it becomes remove curse. If I go to the middle one, if I just click my mouse wheel, that is a swift mand. If I do a shift click, it will be a regruff. And if I do a control click, that is a rebirth. So to the left, I kind of have my, my standard direct casted raid heals. In the middle, I have my oh shit buttons. So Swiftman for a fast heal, you know, uh, consuming a max rank rejuvenation for a fast heal or doing a 1.8 second uh, regrowth for usually a high crit because I have like 60% crit rate, crit chance with it. There we go. Um, and rebirth is yet again a oh shit button. So it's that's kind of a logic in my opinion. Uh, that left cast the direct raid heals, middle oh shit buttons, and right is my uh, hot button. So if I just use standard click, I will cast rank 4 rejuvenation. If I do a shift click, I will do a max rank rejuvenation. And if I do a control click, that will be a abolish poison. poison. And because abolish poison is a, like, it dispels poisons over time, uh, it makes sense, in my opinion, to put it with the other uh, over time spell effects. And if I do control click left, I remove curse. And if I do control click right, like I said, abolish poison. And those are basically the keybinds I use 95% of the time. Uh, it's like they didn't take too long to learn. Uh, however, there is one especially which is my nature swiftness plus healing touch click that uh, took a while for me to learn. Sometimes I mix that up with like was it control click or was it alt click? And what this does uh, is actually a macro. Mm -hmm. And what the macro does is the first line here, stop casting. It basically just stops any cast that you have and interrupts it. So if I do a rank 4 healing touch and I use stop casting, it interrupts the heal. And in case you didn't know, unless your heal goes off, it does not trigger a global cooldown. So if I end it very early on in the cast, the global cooldown will just go like... It will tick maybe half a second and then it's just completely removed like this. It just removes itself. And what that means is that at any time, even during a cast, I can interrupt the cast, use nature swiftness and then do my max rank healing touch. And that means that I have a very strong oh shit button, uh, which is key biting into alt left click. So if I start doing a rank for healing touch and then oh shit, we have a 3.5k heal instantly. Like at max, maybe 0.3 seconds delay. Um, the only thing that can... Or actually, I don't think it... If you're spamming rejuvenation, then... Like, your cast will be done instantly. So I can just bam, and I'm done. And there's still a second on the GCD remaining. And that could be the only thing that might mess this, uh, this macro up. And that's my alt click. So that's a really helpful thing to have. I think those are basically all the um, all the click bindings that I'm using regularly. I also use Gift of the Wild so with the alt click in the middle, uh, which is quite helpful. So I just hover over and click. But now we're going to move on to another very nice feature of this add-on or feature, uh, which is the buffs. So you go to the buffs in general and then you pick which spell to buff and this add-on is specialized around your class so if i go to you know which buffs i can do it only shows druid buffs i don't have to write the name i don't have to pick among all the buffs it just shows me my druid buffs uh, and then i click which buff and then i click who should have it and here i picked uh thorns on warrior and druids because those are usually the tanks and they tend to like thorns and here i pick what color the bar will switch to when we're out of combat if they don't have the buff or if the buff will run out in less than two minutes. So which buff, which class, which color and how much duration is to be left before it switches to that color. So as you can see I don't have thorns up at all so what I do now is just do a left click and this is because I'm out of combat and doing a left click will buff me with the missing buff like that and there I have thorns. So every time we're out of combat, if someone who needs thorns is about to lose it, like there's less than two minutes or they have completely lost it, uh, their icon will be 
brown instead of their class color. So I can just see, ah, oh, he needs thorns, buffed, and we're done. Now this is also something I'm doing with Healing Touch. So here I've gone for Mark of the Wild, and I have it set so that if anyone in my party is missing it, their um, bar goes purple. If anyone in my raid is missing it, their bar goes purple. Huh, strange. I don't know why I have two. And what I like to do is to just click... Uh, if I see that someone is missing uh, Mark of the Wild, I just do my alt mouse wheel to buff um, Mar uh, Gift of the Wild, which is the one hour raid buff, uh, which, groups, which buffs the entire group. I'm not going to do that now because I'm not going to waste regions. But anyway, uh, that's a really good add-on and a good future of, feature of it, and it really helps you with the buff. Uh, you can also do the same for debuffs. So, sadly, this only works... Wait, also in combat is toggled, but for some reason it tends to not work well in combat. Uh, but anyway, that's something really useful. Okay. Uh, that was Healbot, and as you can see you need to turn on several things because it can specialize in one language. So the add-in itself, the data, the English version if you're English, the options, the tooltips. Okay, next up we have Item Rack, which is a very good uh, add-on that basically allows you to queue changes in gear. So if you're doing, for example, Nefarian, and he's just about to do his Fiery Breath, and afterward you want to try and switch to your Hide of the Wild, just to have more healing power. What you can do is just, you wait for the fire, and as soon as you've seen it go out, you can just queue the Hide of the Wild. And if you are in combat, what will happen is that it will be queued, and as soon as you drop combat, it will be equipped instantly. That's one of the good things you can do with this add-on. Uh, sadly, if you try and do it with a weapon, then it will still wait for you to drop combat, despite the fact that you can switch uh, weapons in combat, but this will try and do it as soon as you drop combat. That's a, that's a minus on it. Where do we have it? It is there. You can also make uh, events is probably very useful i haven't looked too much into that um, sets are very useful so you can make several sets to make a new one you just write a new name new set and then you decide which item you want in it i'm just gonna go some tier 0.5 here let's get all those pieces that storm rage something like this i think new set save and what you can do now is you can key bind this set to go to new set key bind key f4 yes so what this allows you to do as you can see i have several sets uh, bounded i can go to uh, healing my old healing set by just clicking f1 switch the pieces and now i can just go to my uh, new set by clicking f4 and that switches all the things instantly so instead of you having to go like well this one and then that one and now i want this one you just go hop and then you go hop, and then back to hop. So it's a nice add-on. Uh, especially useful if you're like a tank or whatever, where you switch gear regularly. Next up, we are gonna look at... Um, kill counter and kill track is just add-ons that are good to use if you're, you know, grinding a lot of mobs. Maybe a mage AoE farming. QI media basically gives your everyone a health bar um, on top of their name and adds all their buffs or debuffs to it. Like if they have a heart, you can see it there. If they have a dot, you can see it there. Leatric plucks, plucks Plus allows you to do like um, automated quest turn and automated quest accept and whatever. Nog combo bar and Nog energy are add-ons that are helpful if you're playing rogue or feral druid. Omni CC allows you to, like normally when an, uh, when an item or spell is on cooldown, it's just ticking down, but with Omni CC, you also have a number related to it, which can be quite helpful because, especially for long buffs, it's gonna be hard to tell whether it's like, is it 10 seconds or 20 seconds left or 5 seconds left? And that allows you to just see that quite easily. Orb sell and repair whenever you go to a vendor, you will automatically sell the crap and you will also repair if that is possible at the vendor, so you don't have to think about that at all. Helps to keep your bag clean. Uh, and it only sells grey items, so no white one, like it doesn't decide what's crap or not, if it's grey it's sold. 
Loot Council, if you're in a Loot Council guild, Songbird, Songflowers uh, helps you keep a track of where the Songflowers are on the timer. Tell me when is a add-on that I never managed to understand. Theorycraft Classic, what that does is try to calculate your values for spells. So for example, it tries to show me the damage Claw would have done uh, with the current gear. It tries to show me how much healing I would have done which, which, with which rank of which spell. It also showed me the crit chance uh, and the HPS I would get if I was just spamming this, ad, this uh, cast. It doesn't work perfectly for whatever reason. So if I, for example, do a rejuvenation rank 11 on myself, it says that it should do 1740, but it takes for 438, multiply that by 5, and we get that it does 2,190. So, something is not correct here. It's not working perfect for me. Could be that it needs to be updated. But that can be a nice add-on to have. Uh, Titan Panel is kind of useful, but in my experience it eats a lot of memory, so it can severely slow down your game. But if you want to see your XP per hour, your um, durability percentage, your gold per hour, that's a good add-on. Totem mod, totem timers, uh, you absolutely need them if you play Shaman. Weak Auras is a great add-on that basically allows you to write add-ons in the game. I'm sure you've seen it, and you can also export and import those add-ons to other players, like one uh, Weak Aura that exists allows you to see the mana of all the healers, that's something I should get, I think. Uh, so you just see their names like wherever you want and how much mana they have in percentage. You can also get a weak aura that allows you to jump in lava, because in case you didn't know, when you're in lava, uh, it's a set timer on when you're gonna take damage, and if you jump at the right time, you can jump so that when you should take damage, you're out of the lava, and then you won't take damage. And then when you land, the timer starts again, and it will show you when to jump. And essentially, this allows you to stay in lava for forever, because you just jump out when you should take damage. Uh, really useful, very complicated in my opinion, but to just import add-ons isn't too complicated, so that's a good thing to have. Uh, and sometimes you'll see players using weak hours that you think are add-ons. Like sometimes you'll see someone with a grey bar here, which shows how many instances they've entered the last hour. That's a weak hour, it's not a add-on. We have Weapon Swing Timer, very helpful for warriors, hunters, rogues, feral dudes, whatever can be helpful for healers and tanks if you want to see when a slow hitting boss is about to hit. World Buff Tracker helps you keep track of the buffs in game. If I, you write exclamation mark world buffs or WB, someone who has this add-on and has the timers will link the timers. So we see for example Ren drops in 14 minutes or it doesn't drop necessarily but it can be dropped again. It goes off cooldown and such. It also warns when there's a minute left on the cooldown. Deadly boss mode is a small guide for basically all encounters in game, or at least encounters that you choose. It's really helpful, like in Untwin Emperors it will show you the cooldown on the teleport, uh, in Soul Group it will show you the, the cooldown on Blood Siphon, and so on and so forth. Uh, in some raids it's not necessary at all, like I'd say that in Molten Core, you can do the entire raid without caring about it. In BWL, you can almost do the entire raid. Uh, and in AQ, it's kind of helpful. It's helpful if there is a mechanic that you need to follow. And so, that was my UI. Those were my add-ons. And before I end off this video, we're quickly gonna log my bank alt just to show you the aux auctioneer add-on. Uh, and this is a quite simple auctioneer add-on. It helps you find the cheapest um, auctions of a certain item and it also helps you sell in a very smooth and efficient way. You can't do as many things with this as you can do with... What's it even called? Trade Skill Master, but this one is also way simpler. So if you want to buy something, maybe I want to buy Nightfin Soup, I start writing the name and the add-on will guess which one it is. I'll it guessed right, so I just press enter, and then it looks for it. And we can see that there's not a lot of these on the auction house, and both are very expensive compared to how much they tend to cost. Uh, if I want to sell something, we go into post, and then all items in my bag that can be sold will be listed here. So for example, if I want to sell Essence of Fire, 
it's listed there it will now scan the auction house and show me the price of all the actions of essence of fire it will also show me the price as a historical percentage so as you can see right now essence of fire is much cheaper than it usually is meaning i should not sell them now if anything i should buy them now and sell it when it goes up uh, i did that with greater eternal essence when it was down to maybe 70 percent of original value even 68 percent and I think that right now it's gone up again to maybe 114% or something. Yeah, 122. So I'm just going to post all of these. And the good thing is that you don't have to pay any deposit when posting uh, enchanting materials. So I'm just going to sell them. If I'm lucky, I'll do a like a 50, 40 percent percentiles profit on them. So this is the auctioneer atom that I use. And if you want to sell everything, you just move... And this is also good, so as you could see I had 90 and I could post 90 stacks of 10. And when the last stack is like only 4, it will edit the stack size and stack count to what I have left. And then I can just press post one final time. And you can also decide how long you want it to be posted. You can like hard edit the price. And it's very simple and easy to use. And it basically shows me everything that I need from a auction house add-on. And so... That was my UI, those were my add-ons, and just quickly, um, I think that I should, and if you want to, just generally, what I should do is, uh, in terms of add-ons, is you look way more into weak arrows, because I think that I'm definitely losing potential by not having all the weak arrows that I could have. Uh, it's a really, really good add-on. Um, one thing that I actually do have on my druid is a weak aura that whenever I crit with my healing touch um, or any spell, basically when I crit with a healing spell, if you are Nature Swiftness Moonglow build, uh, that will trigger like a pretty large animation in the middle of the screen just to warn me that, okay, you got a, na uh, a Nature Swiftness proc and your next, next cast will be 0.5 seconds faster, uh, just to give me a heads up. And maybe you could see in my bag that I had uh, the uh, Mace Hand of Edward the Odd, and the same thing again, if that procs on my um, Enhancement Shaman, then there will be a big animation to warn me, because sometimes when it's a either a important and sudden proc, or if it's a fast and important proc, you want to make it very obvious that you have got it so you don't miss it, because I think you have a 4 second window to use the Hand of Edward the Odd proc, and maybe you're just... You know, you're doing a smack, you want to look at a cooldown on your bar, click a spell, look up, and you could have missed the line of text saying it, and you have to look all the way up here to see that the proc has happened. And in my experience, it's been very easy to miss it. And with a weak aura, I've like reduced my miss rate to 0%. But so, those were all add-ons, those were my UI, that was my UI, and uh, this was all for, for this video. If you have any questions, I'd recommend you to join my Discord, where you can ask questions, come with suggestions, and talk a bit with me. Um, I also stream over at twitch.tv slash clouds. That's also a place where you can, well, just talk to me in real time. And with that said, that was all for this video. I'll be back soon with another video, and until then, see ya!